In classical physics, if you have an object with mass m1 and the velocity is v1, so we define momentum as m1 v1. This is at non relativistic speeds. When I say non relativistic speeds, it's about less than one tenth of the speed of light. We can use this formula p is equal to m1 v1. But if you have a mass and the speed is v2 and v2 is a relativistic speed is something close to the speed of light or half the speed of light then we can't use the same formula so as we discussed in the previous video for time dilation and and um, the length contraction we use the factor gamma that's uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus b square over um, c squared so we will define p as in this case mass m2 so m2 v2 and we put a gamma at the front so the momentum is gamma m2 v2 so what is gamma gamma is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus b square over c squared so in this case gamma is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus v2 square over c squared so that means let's write p is equal to gamma mp that's a generalized equation for relativistic momentum so in this formula here 1 minus v squared over c squared if you look at the formula when the speed goes up get closer to c the speed of light say for instance reaches c's light what will happen to this part 1 minus 1 it will become 0 so it's almost 1 divided by 0 right that's going to be infinity so what's going to happen to the momentum momentum is going to be infinity and that's po not possible and that's the reason that we can't exceed the speed of light so in this formula so this is relativistic momentum and that is non-relativistic momentum there's another way to say why we can't exceed the speed of light is we know that if it reaches the speed of light this is become infinity and this is infinity that means momentum is infinity the momentum the change in momentum is equal to force times time so that means to have a infinity momentum we need to provide a force that is infinity right so it's not possible to have an infinity force that means we can't exceed the speed of light so according to Albert Einstein the universal speed limit is the speed of light we can never exceed the speed of light Albert Einstein said that if we have a mass m0 and if the mass is not moving is at rest and that mass has got a rest energy given by m0 m0 c squared m is called the rest mass and we can call this as a rest energy so this is rest mass and this is rest energy what does that mean if you are holding a pencil there's a pencil and it's made up of any element carbon or steel or whatever it is it has got atoms in it right so at the moment you don't know what is in it but if we find a way to convert all the mass in that pencil into energy if you find a way if you find somehow to convert all the mass into energy that energy would be sufficient probably to light up the whole Sydney for one year. 
I mean, this might be a kind of an extreme example, but the rest energy means that energy is there in that item that you're holding, but we don't know how to convert it. But there are places like sun, in sun, that is sun, hydrogen. They fuse together and become helium. So when they become helium, if you say the total mass of hydrogen here is M1 and the total helium is M2, M2 is always less than M1. So what's happening to M1 minus M2? We call this as a mass defect. So when hydrogen fuse together and we get helium, but the total product, if you count the mass, that's always less than the products. So that difference, the difference in the mass is converted into energy. So in this fusion, we are getting energy. So that energy is equal to M1 minus M2 times C squared. And that's what Einstein said. That mass is converted into energy. So that mass is capable of producing energy that is mass times C squared. So when Einstein said that the rest energy is MC squared, that means if we have a mass M0, M, that is capable of producing this energy. So now Einstein explained about the total energy and the kinetic energy of a mass that is going in a relativistic speed. So if you have a mass at rest, M0, so V0, so it has a rest energy that we looked at it m0 c squared but if that mass the same mass which is m0 is going at a speed v it's a relativistic speed so it is more than the one tenth of the speed of light it would be 0.5 or 0.7 or it would be close to the speed of light the energy is not given by m0 c squared but instead it's given by gamma m0 c squared so that is basically the total energy in that object that's being going in a relativistic speed so what is the kinetic energy of it because in the classical physics we know that if an object m is going at v we say the kinetic energy is half m v squared but here we are saying the total energy of an object going in a relativistic speed is gamma m c squared. So that's total energy. So that total energy has got the component of the rest energy as well. So if so that is a total energy. And this is the rest energy. So we can say the total energy is actually the rest energy plus the kinetic energy. So we can say that the total energy of an object that is going in a relativistic speed is equal to kinetic energy plus the rest energy. So that means kinetic energy is equal to total energy, gamma m naught c squared, that is gamma time the rest mass time the speed of light minus the rest energy, which is m naught c squared. So then we can say, so let me 
So this is a very important equation. So that's the equation for kinetic energy for an object that's moving at a relativistic speed. So if the object is not moving, then the kinetic energy must be zero, right? So let's check that. So in this case, if the object is at rest, that means kinetic energy is equal to, that is one over one minus V squared over C squared M naught C squared minus M naught C squared, right? So if ob the object is at rest, what's going to happen? V is zero. That means this component is zero. So you're going to have square root of one. So one divided by square root of one is one. So that means that's going to be equal to M naught C squared minus M naught C squared equal to zero. So that means this particular equation we can use for relativistic speeds and also non-relativistic speed. Interestingly, if we use the binomial theorem, I mean that's beyond the scope of what we are discussing now, we can actually get this equation. Kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared for objects that are moving in non-relativistic speeds.